Hi everyone, my name is Scott Jeske and I am a filmmaker, YouTuber, and Dehancer user. In this video, I'll be walking you through how to establish the best color settings for your particular camera or working color space according to Dehancer best practices. Now, let's establish proper color settings for the project. As mentioned previously, we can now navigate to the plugin under the Effects and Film Emulation subgroup. And from here, we can either select our clip and double click the plugin, or we can drag and drop it onto the clip, or we can establish an adjustment layer above the footage and drag and drop to the adjustment layer. Okay, we've got Dehancer all set up and ready to rock. But before we dive into the grade and application of profiles, we first need to set our project up for success by making sure that Dehancer knows what color profile we are starting with so that we can input the correct color space or camera profile for a proper interpretation of your footage. First, you should determine if your footage is HDR or SDR. At the moment, Dehancer only supports SDR color grading in Final Cut Pro, which means that your working color space should be set to standard. Check your library, then click the Modify button in the Library Properties panel to make sure you are in Rec. 709 SDR color space. If your footage is HDR, we recommend using the HDR tools effect prior to your Dehancer plugin and converting to 709 SDR. Once again, if your footage is already Rec. 709, you can simply select the Rec. 709 option in the source settings of the plugin. However, log and raw profiles require a little more specificity. You can either convert to Rec. 709 using a camera specific LUT, or in the case of raw camera raw plugins, or ideally you will have a matching input camera profile in Dehancer under the choose camera option that I just showed you. Before performing any adjustments through the emulation modules, you will first want to perform any input corrections that you would normalize your footage to your liking. Exposure, basic white balance, and tint. While there are exposure settings in the print tool, for instance, the input adjustment allows you to correct your original image before any emulation effects are applied. Think of it as a technical correction versus a creative correction, because the exposure compensation is applied in tandem with the source color conversion, which allows for better results than adjusting exposure after the fact with conventional tools. The only exception is when you are working with raw footage, in which case we recommend that you apply exposure compensation in the corresponding raw plugin. In addition to exposure adjustment, you'll have temperature and tint to make sure your input is to your liking. As with exposure, these temperature and tint compensations are intended for footage normalization at the point of input versus creative coloration, which would be added in a module like the color head module. That being the case, I'll leave the footage alone. And then there is also defringe, which allows you to remove chromatic aberrations that are typically visible at the edges of the frame. The intention here is to perform a distinction from the halation and bloom modules that you'll be adding later, since fringing and chromatic aberrations can often compete with the visibility of these effects. Thank you for watching, and please let the team at Dehancer know if you have any questions about Dehancer for Final Cut Pro X.